Danielson Osprey, Tom, what do you think? Fantastic professional wrestling match. I think you could call it one of the best matches on American soil if you want. You could call it one of the best matches of all time if you'd like. It's going to come down to personal preference. And even then, you have all these Will Ospreay matches that are so fantastic with different opponents that I think it's very hard to say one is better than the other across the board. What I saw last night was great. What I've seen between Omega and Osprey, fantastic. Hey, remember Zack Sabre Jr. and Will Osprey had a stupendous match just a few months ago? Uh, oh my gosh, Osprey and Naito, do you remember that from the G1 Climax Finals? Yeah. Yeah, I remember all of them. How many them of those too. were in America? That's why I said America. What about Samoa Joe and Necro Butcher? <laughs> that was a pretty good match, but it wasn't this. Well, you could make an argument. No, you really couldn't. Why not? I'm pretty sure what about Samoa Joe would <sighs> laugh uproariously at that suggestion. What about Hackenschmidt? Thing too is, out, uh, you know, selling out sh Chicago. We'll or never whatever. get an answer from Shawn Michaels. He ain't gonna come on this show. But uh, do you guys watch? You guys watch Shawn Michaels NXT? This is not a guy that books like Ohio Valley Wrestling in 2005. I mean, this dude, he's he's a very forward-thinking guy. And when he's got guys that can do absolutely incredible matches, he puts them together and he lets them just do absolutely incredible matches. And uh, for everybody saying, you know, Undertaker and Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania, bro, you ain't going to find, bruv, you ain't going to find a, better, a bigger Shawn Michaels fan than I am, okay? You won't. And uh, and this match was better than Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. And I'd bet you anything, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, having a conversation, Shawn, I think, is going to tell you the same thing. But people don't want to hear that. That's okay. Well, to you, what are the matches that are in contention? There aren't any. Is it any. this and then nothing else? In this else? country, there's, there's not any. I mean, I, wa I rewatched the other one. What was the, uh, was it uh, Ben Juan Angle? Or was it Ben Juan Shawn Michaels? I mean, uh, you know, there are a couple, and I, I have rewatched them recently. For those of you that talk about recency bias, I've watched some of them recently, and they were like, they were like incredible. I'll, I'll tell you, like, they're, they're, those matches, I watch them again, and I, I remember sitting down thinking, okay, I remember this being like a five star match. I'm going to watch it now, and I'm going to see if it like holds up, if it's still a five star match. And, uh, and the match ends, and it's like, yep, that's, that's still a five star match today. I mean, this this match is, I don't want to say the first, but it's one of, like, maybe three where, I mean, when it's over, I actually felt like Dave and, dude, five ain't enough. Not even close. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is so far beyond a five-star match. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So, anyway, whatever. I don't care. You guys can all have your opinion. We don't need to fight about it, even though everybody will. But uh, I will say... Not just in America, but in the world. I have never heard a we're not worthy chant near the end of a match. This crowd, this crowd at Dynasty, if, if I were a promoter, it's like, can I just hire every single person in the crowd? Remember people used to say that Tony would hire fans? Do you guys remember this, by the way? I just remembered that. Guys, do you remember when people used to say, the only reason AEW is doing good attendance is because Tony's paying all the fans? Remember that? And uh, now they've got like, uh, you know, as of a week ago, they had 1400 for uh, Dynamite. This, where's, why is he paying the fans now? Well, if, if, that, if that's the case, sign me up. Yeah. Where, you know what I mean? I mean, come on. Like, where are all the people that got paid? Like, how come they're not getting paid anymore? Is he not a billionaire anymore? Seems to me that, uh, seems to me he wasn't paying people. But anyway, this match was incredible. What do you think about the uh, main event, Swerve and Joe, new uh, new AEW heavyweight champion? I thought it was a good match. I thought the second best match on the show though was Okada Pac. Yeah. If I had to pick, I thought that was a better great than a ladder match. match. Actually, you know what? I yeah, think I rated I think both so. of them exactly. Uh, I think I gave the ladder match another quarter star. I mean, I think so. I mean, I enjoyed it more just because of the that ladder match. There's so much dangerous stuff. In those, you know, so much small margin of error when it comes to dealing with these outside objects. 
and I'm just fearing for these guys' lives at all times, you know. Uh, I thought, especially for the opener on the pay-per-view, that uh, Pac and Okada was just as good as it could be. Well, what that about spot. that? Uh, what about that Roderick Strong Kyle O'Reilly oh, match? That match was great. That was Fantastic. great, wasn't it? I mean, do you want me to keep going? Sure. There was some great stuff in that six man with the House of Black, the triple spear spot. I popped big for that. I mean, just up and down. I thought the whole the whole card pretty much delivered. Pretty much delivered. I think every match over delivered. I'm trying to think of one that didn't. Even like you know, I, I figured that Tony Storm and Thunder Rosa would be fine, but uh, that was way better than I expected. That was that was the best Thunder Rosa match since she came back. Minimum since she came back, maybe much longer. And, uh, you know, the big complaint about Tony Storm was, man, the gimmick is great, but she does the gimmick during the matches, and it hurts the matches. She needs to just get in there, like, do the gimmick out of the ring and then wrestle in the ring. And that's exactly what she did, and they had an excellent match. So we got more. I got to ask you about something non-Dynasty related. Why are you so excited that we have a battle royal for the vacant women's title? Well, I just love battle royals, Brian. I mean, that's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. As far as traditional match styles go, I think that's the one that proves the true supremacy of a competitor, where you can defeat multiple opponents. Do you remember how excited I got for that dogfight three-on-one MMA match? Do you remember how excited I got when I found those videos of the Tarzan of the North fighting 13 guys in Brazil mm. in the 90s at the circus. I love stuff like that. The ECW Monster Mash Battle Royal. All these are fond, fond memories in my, what little brain I have left, Brian. So anytime a Battle Royal comes up, nonetheless, for a prestigious championship, much like the one they are fighting for tonight, how can you not be excited? I have a question for you, yeah. Ryan, and that is, who do you think is walking out tonight as the champion, and why is it Liv Morgan? Well, of course it's Liv Morgan. So here's the thing with this Battle Royal. You know, I, I don't know why they did a, a Battle Royal to determine a new women's champion after Rhea had been champion for over a year, and they, they do such a great job nowadays protecting their titles. And, you know... One one person there who I don't think actually knows but suggested to me that, well, you know, NXT is doing a women's tournament right now. They don't want two tournaments going on at the same time. It was Otis, wasn't it? It seems stupid to me. I mean, come on. Just do just pick your four top women, have uh, two matches, winners face off at the end of the show or next week, and you've got a new champion. But they chose a battle royal, and uh, they had a graphic on SmackDown. With the following wrestlers shown, which shows how this was thrown together, because among the wrestlers were Becky, who is on hiatus right now. I suppose she could return tonight, but she's she's been on hiatus. And also, uh, Zia Lee, who was fired. So I don't think she's going to be in the Battle Royal. Could be wrong. But Liv, Nia, Maxine, Chelsea, Natty, Katana Chance, Indy Hartwell, Zoe Stark, Kane Carter, Candice, Shayna, Tegan, Piper Niven, and Ivy Nile were the people on the screen. You know, isn't the draft this week? Yes, they should just throw all the women in there. All the women in the all the women in the entire company. Yeah, dude, they should. They should show. They, they should not? have two rings. May as well do that. You know what they should do? Uh, I got an idea. They got two rings. Okay, everybody, WWE, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, two rings, sixty women or whatever, and uh, boom, 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 boom. Winner of the first ring, winner of the second ring, face off one on one in an actual match, and uh, and the title is on the line. Uh, Becky apparently on Twitter did say she was coming back tonight, so I guess she's coming back. So much about Rock this week, so I decided a good match for Rock would be uh, Cold Stone. Straddle him on corner post must have done damage, and Stone Cold. Kicked the rock out of the ring. Shane, Shane was rooting for Rock. A closed lap him while down. Rock put his arm out across Stone Cold. It was just a massive infusion. Stone Cold won the match. Cool. Can you verify we did not use AI to replace Granny? <laughs> yeah. 
Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.